This is our second video in our Intro to Rhinestone Design series. And in this video, we're going to be creating a very basic uh, rhinestone design. So the first thing we need to do is import our artwork. And we can use the File Import option here in CorelDRAW. There is a icon here that we can click on to import. And when we hover over that icon, you see something in parentheses that says Control I, which is the keyboard shortcut uh, inside CorelDRAW. And so because I'm a pretty experienced CorelDRAW user, I do find myself using those uh, very common keyboard shortcuts to import artwork. Um, another option would be, and I'll just show you quickly, is that we could just drag and drop the artwork from our desktop right into our CorelDRAW workspace. Okay, so lots of options to get your artwork inside CorelDRAW. So let's go ahead and take a look at our artwork here. So you can see the design is a very basic design. And this is a bitmap file. And you'll see that from left to right, there basically is no white space, but there's quite a bit of white space from top to bottom. And so this isn't necessarily that common. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a rectangle around, and I'm going to add some white space uh, to this. So I'm going to select both of them and go to the uh, bitmaps, convert to bitmap function. And now you can see that there's quite a bit of white space on either side of our design. And this is more typical when we're importing artwork, what we would have. So there's a function in CorelDRAW, or excuse me, a function in EasyStone that will allow us to resize the design to our finished desire. So we're going to go over to the Specialty tab and choose Set Size, and we're going to pick on the left side of the design and then the right side of the design. And that tells us how wide the design actually is currently. You can see it's about an inch wide, but we want that design to be about 10 inches wide and click on resize and now we know that the design is actually 10 inches wide okay so we can go ahead and right click on the design and lock that uh, design element down so we can't move it any further or interact with it so now the next thing we need to decide uh, is what size rhinestones we're going to be using now typically I would communicate with the person I'm doing the design work for as to what their intended purpose of the design is and come up with a with a game plan in regards to um, what what um, rhinestone sizes we're going to be using. Now in this design, I'm just going to guess because this was a design that was posted, so I don't really know what the intended purpose is. So we're just going to uh, take a guess at what they want. Um, so the wider elements of the design, you can see the letters I'm going to do an SS16 stones and probably also SS6 stones, which that will be an interesting part of this design element uh, that I want to show you. And then the smaller design elements, I'm probably just going to do an SS10 stones. Okay. And this will help us when we go to actually create the design, the template for the design as well, using the different stone sizes, we can put everything on one template and be able to use different colors if, in fact, that's what we had the desire to do. Okay? So let's go ahead and begin this process. And you're going to see something right off the bat here as we go through. Wow, this is a very, very simple design. You're going to see that by taking control of the uh, the design process, we can create something truly unique, truly different that you could not get with any type of magical button in design software. Uh, forget about the magical buttons. Let us take control of the design and create something truly unique. Okay, so so the first step is to understand the relationship of our artwork to the actual physical size of the rhinestone. So in order to do that, we need to place some rhinestones. So we're going to just right click on add stones and then right click on SS6 and click. And then we're going to right click on 10 and click. 
and then we're going to right click on SS16 and click and then hit the escape key. So now these are the three size rhinestones we're going to be using for this design and now we can understand visually how big the design is in relationship to the various different size rhinestones. So we're going to begin here by put, placing one SS16 stone at the top there and then come down here and right click to make a duplicate and place one down here and select both stones by holding the shift key down. So I have one selected, hold my shift key down, select the other and bam, add stones. There we go. We have a series of stones. Now we're going to flip this horizontally. So we're going to use the mirror function here in Easy Stone that will mirror that over. And then we're going to keep going. We're going to go ahead and right click and make a duplicate here. Right click and make a duplicate there. Shift click both stones, add stones, delete. We are going to then mirror. And now we have that one. And we're going to come across there and hold our shift key. And that constrains it so it's perfectly horizontal from our other stones. Now we don't know if these two are lined up perfectly, but we're going to select them both and then hit the L key on our keyboard. This is a Corel draw function. And now we know that those are perfectly aligned to the left edge of both objects. Now the next thing we need to do is you can see here, we need to find the center point of this. All right. Now this is something that the Corel draw doesn't have the functionality to do, but we certainly created that functionality here in Easy Stone because I like I have OCD, so I like very, very precision. I don't like to guess. Certainly, we could come in here and guess and get it pretty close, but no, I don't want to do that. I like to have perfection, and so that's why we have the functions that we have available in EasyStone. So your software possibly would not have this type of functionality, but I'll show you generically how we could do it in CorelDRAW is we could just click here on our ruler, and come down and right there you can see where that oh, that I thought that would actually snap but it doesn't seem to be snapping it really should snap but it doesn't seem to be snapping but in any event we're not going to use that function we're going to use the function that we've made into easy stone so just select the two objects and you see this button right here CVH what that does is it creates a center or a vertical uh, vertical or horizontal guideline at the center uh, but if we, we need to hold the shift key down and right click in order to create a horizontal guideline based on the center point of these selected objects. Boom. You can see there. We Now we have our guideline. And if we pick up the stone from the center, right click, and then snap it to the guideline, now we know that that stone is absolutely centered like here and here. So now we're going to go ahead and Add stone, you can see there, boom, boom. That takes care of that. Now we're going to mirror this vertically, so we have to right-click on the mirror function. Left-click, we'll do it horizontally. Right-click, we'll do vertically. And you can see, we know it's dead center, because look, that stone is sitting right on top of the other one. So we know that that's dead center. Okay? So let's keep going now. Let's go ahead and move this one over, holding our Shift key, right-clicking. Right clicking. Now we need to line those two up, select them both and hit L. That will line up the two left edges. Now we already have the center point found. So we can just drag this one over. Select those two. Delete the path. Mirror vertically. So right click. And now you can see we have that. And now what I would do is come in here with my pick tool and mirror again. But see, I, I did not have it selected properly for the mirror function. So there, now we can go ahead and mirror it. So now it's been mirrored. And then I'll go ahead and take this and slide it over and add stones in between here. All right, now we have a, we have a bit of an issue. You can see right here, number one, the spacing here and here and here. All looks pretty uniform. The spacing here does not look uniform. So I'm going to move, slide this one in. Select all these stones. We have that function right here where we can select in between those two stones. And then space them horizontally. So now that 
now that spacing is a bit more uniform, I'm actually going to bring it in just a little bit more, though. There we go. So now that horizontal spacing is pretty well accurate. But look here. We've got a problem. We've got an overlapping stone there. Now, normally this would be a concern, but because it's just in this one spot, I don't think it's a problem creating our template, even though it is overlapping. Um, it's not overlapping by much. So when we go to put in our rhinestones, I don't think it's going to have any problem with our rhinestones fitting in there. Um, so I would not be concerned about that one tiny little overlap. Okay. Um, so now we've accomplished this much of the design. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm deliberately making this overly difficult um, just to show you that we can do these things. Um, you know, the reality of it is I, I don't know what their intention is. I have no idea. So anytime I'm doing any type of design work, though, I do like to create some type of element that might just be kind of interesting that, um, you know, you just wouldn't see in a typical design. So I look at this design. It's pretty simple. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and add one extra element to the design just for fun and just for difficulty to show you that, yes, it's going to be kind of difficult, not really, but it's going to be kind of tricky um, what we're about to do. But um, but it's, you know, if you understand the process and get used to how to utilize uh, this, these various functions. If you are going to use Easy Stone for design, your your design software might have a similar function um, to to make this next process pretty easy. Um, but but at any rate, I just want to show you how we would do it in Easy Stone. So just for fun, just for complexity, let's get rid of this guideline. I'm going to right click on EG to get rid of that. So that's just that's just in our way. So what I want to do is I want to add some strategically placed SS6 stones alongside my SS16 stones. But now, yes, I could come in here and just, you know, eyeball this and, you know, say, well, that's good enough. But I don't like to do that. If I, I really like to um, have everything properly spaced. And so I built in some functionality here into, into Easy Stone that's going to make this process uh, pretty simple. Uh, not super simple, but pretty simple. So let me show you. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a straight line. So I'm just going to select two stones and hit draw a line, and that's its function. Creates a line from one point to another. Done. Now, what I want to do is, is I need to space these uh, SS6 stones perfectly along the edge of my SS16 stones. But I don't know what that dimension is, nor do I care to know what that dimension is. So we have that function built in here to Easy Stone to allow us to do that for us. So we don't we don't have this guesswork. So we'll go to the Stone Field tab here, and we have this little blue box, and we're going to click on that blue box. Now I have my line selected. I'm going to click on my blue box, and this pops up, and it gives us some offset options. And what is it we want to do? We want to go from 16 to 6. That's what we want to do. And so you see that function right here, 16 to 6. And when we click on Create Offset, what we're going to do is we're going to right-click because we want to go to the outside. So watch what happens. Right-click, and you can see now we've offset this line a certain dimension. And what Easy Stone takes is, is taking into consideration, it's taking into consideration the size of our SS6 stone, it's taking into consideration the size of our SS16 stone, and it's taking into consideration the amount of spacing that we have specified, which in this case is a half a millimeter. Holy cow. I'm glad we got that worked out, right? So, so now we have all of that worked out. So now we have this new line that's right alongside our SS16 stones. And this is where we would place our SS6 stones. I do want a vertical center point. Let me come in here a little bit. I need to know where the vertical center point is too. So I'm just going to select that bottom stone. And there's my uh, vertical center point. So in theory... If we were to place an SX6 stone right at that intersection, it should be perfectly a half a millimeter away from this SS16 stone. So let's just see if that is actually true. 
So we're going to make a duplicate. We're going to go from the center of our SS6 dome and come down to the intersection. Boom. There it is. So that should be absolutely perfectly spaced. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this down and come up here. Right there. And you can see now that that stone, and you can see, look at there, it's exactly a half a millimeter away. And that, there you go. That's what we wanted. Now, the next thing we want to do is, we've, we've got a couple of options here. I'm going to create a guideline. See where I created that guideline? It's right there at the top. And so this stone really should come down so that it, it's more or less right along that that top just like that one is okay it doesn't have to be that way but that's just the way i decided i wanted it so now i'm going to select those two stones and hit add stones and you can see it's going to create a series of stones right along our ss16 stones let's get rid of all these guidelines that we don't need we don't no longer need that and we don't no longer need this let's switch over to regular mode here and now you can see that we have this line of ss16 stones right along that edge and i just for the, it, absolutely no reason i just thought it'd be fun to do and oddly i think it'll be fun to do only on one side i don't know why that's just what my brain is telling me to do uh so so at any rate um that's what we're going to do on all of this we're just going to do it on one side okay so let me just go ahead and go through the process real quick we're just going to do so we're going to draw a line we have our line selected. We're going to click our blue box. We're going to go from SS6 to SS16. There we go. We're going to do a vertical guideline. There we go. Now we're going to take our SS6 stone and we're going to place it just like we did. Boom. There it is. And then we're going to duplicate that down here along this line. Boom, there it is. And then we're going to select this end stone right here. We're going to do a bottom guideline. And then we're going to take this, slide it along the line so it just barely touches. I know, I'm cheating. I'm eyeballing. I don't like to eyeball. I like to have it perfect. But in this particular instance, I don't think it's really that critical. So we'll go ahead. Let's get rid of the guidelines. We don't need those no more. Let's get rid of our extra paths that we don't need. We'll get rid of that one. And we'll get rid of that one. Okay. So now we have boom. We have boom. Now we're going to move on. Now we're going to do this. So we're going to do this one. Draw a line. We have our line selected. We're going to export or create the offset. We're going to grab borrow stone here. We're, now this one here, we're going to have to take this one. And that's going to create it horizontally. So now we're going to do it. Uh, or vertically, now we're going to do it horizontally because I need that intersection of where I can place that stone. And then we're going to copy it down here. And the same thing here, we're going to do the bottom. So we're going to right click to give our bottom guideline and then we're going to move from center to this path. And this one's a little bit different because it, we don't, we don't want this way out here. You know, we, we don't necessarily want it way out there. So this one is a little bit different because it's at an angle. Um, really what we want is we want a, a more or less perpendicular. Uh, that's really ultimately what we would want uh, as far as placement. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball that again, even though I don't like to eyeball. But there you go. So now we have that path. Now let's get rid of our extras. We don't need all them guidelines. We can get rid of that, and then we can get rid of that, okay? All right, so now moving on to this. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to go ahead and draw a line, create our offset, right-clicking, grab a six stone. We're going to grab this, and we're going to right-click to create a horizontal guideline. That will give us our intersection point, and then... Grab this, make a duplicate by right-clicking and dragging. And we'll put that one right there. We'll connect these two. There you go. 
and we'll get rid of the pieces that we don't need. Okay, and we'll right click. Uh, yes, we can get rid of that guideline too. Now, so I've, I have it here and I want it here as well just for fun, uh, just to make it extra complicated. So we're going to go ahead and draw a line. We're going to offset. We're going to go ahead and uh, I do want to do a horizontal guideline because I think that will be our intersection point right there. Pretty close. Even though we're kind of tight to that one, that's okay. I don't think that's a big deal. There we go. We'll eyeball it down here and maybe I will just go ahead and I will go ahead and move this so it's not quite so tight. Like I said, honestly, I don't think it'd be a big deal at all, even if it was that tight. But we'll just go ahead and do that, just because we can. Get rid of all this extra stuff we don't need. Right click. And there we have it. Now let's just take a look at this by itself, just so you can see how this extra little design element that we did. Let's go ahead and enhance mode here. And now you can see more visually how much more appealing that is. So we kept in line with the original artwork, but just by adding those extra SS6 stones along the SS16 stones, visually to me it just makes for a more interesting design. And like I said, it keeps in line with the original uh, artwork. So this is a you know the designer's interpretation of the logo. You know, ultimately the client you know that we're actually creating this for may not like that, may not want that, may, you know, they, they may think their, their logo has to be absolutely uniform because, you know, obviously the original letters, they were all uniform in width and here they're not uniform in width. And so I like the way it looks, but like I said, ultimately, uh, you know, our, our customer would, would make those decisions for us. But I just wanted to show you how we had some specialized tools here in Easy Stone that enabled us to to do something different if if we so desire. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the rest of the design here. So I'm going to switch over to Light Siam and some SS10 stones and drop one. And we're gonna we're gonna do this little wave. Um, I, I don't really know why I picked red. I just thought it would look good. And all I'm gonna do I'm just using my space bar here and just manually kind of spacing them around. Then we're going to do the same thing along here. We don't care if we're overlapping. You probably saw, If you watched our first video, you probably know why. Because all we're doing is just getting an idea of stone placement, okay? So now I'm going to use my freehand pick tool here in Corel Draw and pick up all these stones. Sometimes I'll change the color, make sure, yes, I have just the ones I wanted selected, and then right-click on D, and there we go. Now all of those are perfectly spaced around that side. Now I want all of these perfectly spaced on this side. Right-click on D, and so now we know that that spacing is absolutely spot-on perfect on both sides. Okay? Let's go ahead and switch over to here. And here we're going to just use our stone fill tab and just offset. So now we know that those stones are exactly a half a millimeter apart. We'll come down here. Bring those that, that pile down there. Okay. And now we want, we'll put in a horizontal guideline. Because I'm going to take this and rotate it. Okay. And then we're going to grab it from the center and snap it right onto that uh, guideline. We'll go ahead and get rid of that guideline now. And now we want to do the same thing basically right here. So here we're going to go ahead and rotate it. It would be rotated uh, 45 degrees. And then we'll go ahead and position it. Now, I want this slash mark 
exactly the same positioning. So we'll use that mirror function here in CorelDRAW or in EasyStone. So you can see the original artwork, it was not perfectly centered. I want it perfectly centered. So boom, there we go. So now I know it's perfectly centered. Um, so now we just have this little line here, almost like a little heartbeat type uh, uh, line. And this is where you can see how tight it is where we might have to make a, a small change to the original artwork to, to fit it in here. So we'll see what we can do here. We are, we, I'd like to do it in SS10 uh, stones um, because um, then we could, you know, I'm thinking about how we would create it using templates. So I would like um, to keep that in mind that we, we don't use more more than because we have SX six stones used as our little design element um, that we did. So I don't really want to use SX six stones in this particular scenario. So we may have to make a small adjustment to the original design to fit it all in there. And I think, you know, this is probably OK. Um, Let's see here. What are we going to do? Try to keep with the original design itself as much as we can. But, you know, trying to squeeze it all in here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make an executive decision. And I'm going to say that's close enough. Even though you could see we did make an adjustment here. Um, let's I'll tell you what. All right. Let's let's play around I tell you what let me undo this this is something that um, you really got to think about when you're doing your design work um, you have to kind of guess a little bit what the client would want so I'm going to call that done that's one option and then I'm not super thrilled with that although I think it looks pretty good so that's one option now I'm just going to Throw all those redstones away. So mark it, select them all, delete it, and let's start over. So now I'm going to, for this part, I didn't have in the original design. So now I'm going to kind of use that as a starting point and kind of force it. Yes, that's what I want. And And then I'll compare this result with the other results and then pick one, which one I think will be better. Like I said, it's hard. If I was doing this in SS6 stones, I could definitely squeeze it all in there. There's no question. Um, but because I'm using SS10 stones, it's hard to get all these different points so tight when you're working in such a small area. Okay. So we're going to call that good there and then pick between the two. So let's just go ahead and bring that over. And we'll see which one we like better. We'll throw a weed box around it. Just take a look. Obviously, those two little red ones aren't there. Looking at them side by side, I'll be honest. I don't think it matters. Um, if I had to pick one, I think the bottom one, the last one we did, was probably closer to the original artwork than the top one. So there we go. Decision made that quick. Bottom one it is. There you go. So now the next step is to just double check that there are no overlapping stones, which we already know there are. There's two of them. There you go. So I always uh, take that, we'll make a duplicate, there we go, and we'll do a quick proof. It's going to simulate the stones. I like to add a little drop shadow. Um, it also tells us how many stones are used. By default, it does give us a gray background, but I'm going to switch it back over to black. And there is our finished design. You can see here they look... Pretty good simulated rhinestones. So it tells us all the different stones we used. Let's go ahead and export this design. 
So we're going to export our proof image, and we have to give it a name. So I always do it by um, the date. So today is 010714 dash easy stone templates dash I'm going to just call it gav logo I don't know what that really is but then we're going to save our CDR we're always going to export as 1200 pixels JPEG boom so we've saved our Corel draw file we've exported um, our design and then now let's go ahead and export our vector file for our template now as I said um, I deliberately designed this in a way so it could all fit on one template. We would brush in our SS16 stones. We would then brush in our SS10 stones and then finish it up by our SS6 stones. And you can absolutely do this, people. We have video demonstrations. If you look on our Facebook or uh, YouTube channel, it'll, it'll be under Creating Rhinestone Templates. Uh, if you search our YouTube channel, you'll see it. It says Creating Rhinestone Templates where we show you step by step how you can very easily brush in multiple size rhinestones on a single template. So if you don't if you're struggling to do that, number 1, there's a there's a, a several different things to consider. Obviously your template material could be one of those things. The rhinestones that you're using could definitely be one of those things. Also, the size of the hole in your template for the rhinestones that you're using can definitely be one of those things. But, and also just your, your overall brushing technique in, in creating the transfer could definitely be one of those things. But once you get those things dialed in, once you, once you figure out, okay, what rhinestone do I want to use? What size hole is best for those rhinestones? Am I using the proper template material? And am I using the proper brushing technique? You nail all those things down, I promise you, it's going to be a lot easier making rhinestone transfers with one template or fewer templates than you ordinarily would use if you're using multiple size rhinestones. So practice, practice, practice. Know your craft, and I'm telling you, ultimately in the end, you'll be able to create your rhinestone transfers quicker because you've taught yourself how to do it. So at any rate, let's go ahead and export the vector file here. Now this is something that um, I'm I'm super excited about uh, that no other no other rhinestone software has this functionality. I'm not going to talk about it at length in this video. But this is very special. You see it says Easy Stone Advanced Export. I promise you no other rhinestone software on the planet has this uh, functionality. And it's a very, very important functionality in my opinion. Um, because here we can tell what how we want the templates to be dispersed. Now in this example, this is why I'm not going to be talking about it right now. But you see where it says template 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, we're able to tell... If we want crystal 6 and 16 on the first template, and then on the second template, we want 10. We can tell it that. Um, no, All the other rhinestone software I've ever seen always dumps it out on individual templates. It doesn't give you the option to pick and choose. I may want my crystal SS16s on the same template as my light Siam 10s, and then I might want my 6s on a separate template. So we have the ability, we could just say, oh, give me sixes on the first template and give me 16s and 10s on the second. No other software out there, when, it, when you go to export your templates, gives you that option. They don't give you the option to pick and choose. And it's a, and it's a very serious thing when you're making templates because it costs lots of money for template material. We already know this. But in this case, it's a very simple design. Very few rhinestone templates rel relatively in the design so we're going to just dump them all on one template and go and so we're going to uh, you could choose what size or what type of file you want to export in my case uh, because I'm creating designs for sale I want to give you both EPS and SVG and then I also use the PLT and Illustrator formats because I have to go one step further and give you the file for the Crystal Press Studio which is uses the PLT option, and then I have to do the Illustrator file 
to create my Sierra hotfix file, which is a whole different file format and a whole different convoluted process of converting files. So at any rate, that is that. So uh, now we can go ahead and uh, just export those uh, uh, SVG files. And it didn't know what. It kind of got messed up there. Let me let me let me redo that. Um, because I didn't have I didn't have these selected. I selected and deselected and yeah, all kinds of stuff. So at any rate, so now it will go ahead and create those files for me. And if we look on my desktop here, you can see that we have the uh, the uh, original file. Let's see where is that? There it is. There's the Gav logo CDR, and then we have the JPEG that we exported, and then we have our EPS and our SVG file for this particular file. Okay, that's it. We're done. So in, in the actual process of creating this design, probably a 10 or 15 minute job um, at best, and boom, we have a really great looking design. Um, some extra design elements in there that I thought were fun just to throw in there to show you how we could do it fairly simply. Once you understand um, what you're doing, um, you can you know create something a little bit different than any type of magic button you know there there's no magical button that could have done what we did for this design adding those little ss6 stones in certain places because it can't read our minds so we as a designer have to take over and 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 create that design but that's it that's all there is to this one thanks for watching